Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics. In this video, I wanted to give you an update on a tank that we set up a couple months ago. In the fish room, we call it the Driftwood Tank. It's a 20 gallon tank where we have a really sweet piece of driftwood. Joanna set it up, like I said, a couple months ago and I realized sometimes we set up these tanks and then we don't come back to them for a very long time. And so I wanted to give you an update on what's going on with this tank. Watch the plants and how they're growing in. Talk a little bit about the fish. I hope you enjoy the video. Really appreciate you being here. So this is the tank as it was originally completed. I really like it. Again, it's a 20 gallon, a standard 20 gallon. And this was a rather large piece of driftwood that Joanna had added. The background was from Universal Rocks. It was one of the more uh, less expensive backgrounds. Not quite as three dimensional, but I really like the fit. We've got the Tiger Limia in here. We have some rainbows, uh, some Furcata rainbows some pygmy cats and a couple of L10A plecos that I'll show you shortly. This is the way it looks now. So you can see it's a little different. Uh, it's darkened up a little bit. We have a lot more growth of the hornwort that you see growing on top. And one of our secret weapons against algae, I guess you could say, is having some type of floating plant that can take a lot of the nutrients out of the water column will often prevent algae issues. So here we have hornwort. There's some duckweed up there as well. And that has been predominantly what has been growing so far in this tank. This tank is around just over two months old, uh, maybe about 10 weeks or so. So you can see after 10 weeks what's happened. And the plants, the Anubias, they really haven't grown much. And that's what we would expect, at least so far. It's a slow growing plant. You've got the hornwort taking out a lot of the nutrients and the Anubias is glued to the wood. So it's also removing nutrients from the water column. It has enough. Uh, the, it's With all that hornwort, we've created a low light situation, which is nice for the Anubias. You can see we do have some jungle val growing in the tank. Uh, we also have some crypts growing in the tank, and they haven't grown a lot in the last 10 weeks, but they have grown in, in some cases in a noticeable way. Uh, you can see the fish here are looking great. Uh, one of the things that's interesting about this tank, when you build an ecosystem where there is a lot of places for fish to hide, sometimes they're going to do that. So you're going to see the fact that, yeah, the rainbows are out there. They're pretty personable fish, but then like the tiger limia that we saw when we were just putting the tank together, they're kind of hiding in the back more. Uh, they're all doing fine. We've got about a half a dozen or so in this tank, but they are a little bit more reclusive as are the pygmy or the, uh, not pygmy, but hybrosis catfish that are in this tank. Uh, they're also tend to spend a little bit more time in the rocks, although you can see them out and about right here, which is cool. There's about a half a dozen of them in this tank. But once again, uh, they will often stay in the rocks in the back. And so the way that Joanna built this aquascape is, yes, we have this large piece of wood, but there's a rather large rock pile behind that. And that's where the fish feel comfortable. And that's okay. So when we have this, this kind of natural setting where there's a lot of aquascape, if the fish hide, that's kind of the point is that you want to build a, a system for them where they do feel comfortable. Now the other inhabitants that we have in this tank, we have some L10A plecos. They are lizard tail plecos. We have two of them in this tank. They're really cool because they take on kind of a, a reddish brown color. They are more reclusive. We'll often see them associated with the driftwood, kind of hiding out. So it's a real treat when they come out. Uh, you can see one of them here. These are really pretty fish. Like I said, one is here, one is up in the driftwood. You might be able to notice it a little bit later in the video. We originally had three of them. We lost one. We were down to two. And my hope was that at some point they might breed, but I, I don't know if we've got, I don't think we have a male and a female, which is one problem. And I think our water might be a little bit too hard. The pH might be a little bit too high for these guys to feel comfortable breeding, but they have been doing well. We do have uh, also some blue mystery snails, as you can see here. We've bred a lot of gold mystery snails, and I still find myself, and you may see one or two in this tank, but I still find myself having to pull gold mystery snails out of here because what they do is they crawl over from the tank next door where they breed, crawl on the lid, and then wind up in here. So I try to keep them separate. Uh, and then you'll see the limia coming out here pretty soon along the backside, getting a little bit more reclusive. But this has been a really good mix of fish for us. I'm really enjoying this tank. I enjoy the look. I find it interesting just to kind of watch the fish and how they interact with everything. So I hope you enjoyed the video. hope you enjoyed the update. If you did, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.